Hey guys, how's it going? It's probably been about a week since we dragged home this donated Lamborghini kit car that somebody was building and never got finished. I haven't had much time to look at it, but I do now. So I figure when we roll this thing forward, we'll get her up on jack stands. Maybe we'll pop some skins off it, see how it's constructed, and just see what we're working with. I, you know, I, I don't know much about these at all. It kind of fell into my lap and I want to see what we're getting into, if we can do anything with it. Hopefully we can. And maybe we'll spend today to get a better assessment and judgment on what we have and what we're working with. Give me a few minutes, we'll get set up and have some fun. That's a little better. It's up in the air, we can get underneath it now. And the boss stopped by. She's uh, currently uh, preoccupied. Pop the front bumper, I guess we're going to call it, off of it to get the jack underneath it. Let's go hop on a creeper. You guys are going to see it for the first time as I am. So let's see what it has to offer. Hopefully lighting will be okay. I got the one on my forehead that's, I got it defused. So hopefully it won't bleach things out. So we believe it's a BMW V12 out of a seven series is what the engine is. And you think the transmission is a Porsche 944 with a limited slip. Is on. <laughs> hey, you want to keep it down? <laughs> A lot of space in the wheel well there. It looks like it has like two tubes. One there, and the one going down the center of it are kind of the strength of the car. If you think a VW Bug, actually, it's kind of the same idea. They do the same thing with the heater channels and the the uh, torque tube, I think it's called in the center. Just a big skid plate underneath it. See dual distributors up top. Get the light out of your eyes. don't know what went here. The jacket opened to the inside of the engine. I don't know if that's oil or coolant. Hard to tell. I see. There we go. Here and here it looks like a couple of proximity switches are You know, crank position sensors, I should say. And the fact that there's two of them, oh, I think has something to do with the distributors. But the distributors are tied into the camshaft and running off of them. Yeah, I wonder what went here. I'd want to say maybe oil. It's got to be a place for an oil filter, right? Did you see one yet? I haven't. So maybe it's an external. I don't think it's a dry stump. The oil pan looks fairly large enough for the oil capacity. I see a pan over here. It does have a sensor on it though. The engine and transmission. This looks like it has somebody maybe made an adapter plate. Or is this part of the engine and this adapter plate? Are they both adapter plates? starters bolted into. Yeah, they're stacked up pretty good though, whatever it is. So you got one piece, two, and three. This could have been part of the bell housing from the original 
automatic transmission. I think all the 7 series, at least in this country, are automatics. And the other thing is the trans is empty. Not the, not the trans, the bell housing is empty. You guys can see up inside there. Yeah, there's nothing there. That's the input shaft, so there's no clutch, there's no flywheel, there's no pressure plate, throw up bearing. Where's that go? Inboard disc brakes. I think he did a nice job on the exhaust system too. The exhaust looks really built well. Got little flex pipes on it. And I guess they call this box of wood was commenting saying it's a resonator. And just free floating right now. No, that looks like it's bolted in all that. Actually, it just looks like it's all just sitting there. It's got little rubber motor mounts, little rubber mounts rather. I guess you know, the engine twisted, the, the exhaust is going to need to be able to move a little bit with it. It's hanging off the tail end of the transmission though. I think it'll kind of move all as one. All the bracketry and everything looks nicely made. Rear suspension. The upper one looks like it's aluminum and it's probably store bought. And the bottom one looks like it was fabricated. Along with the the hub assembly. Big wheels, huh? 335, what? 335, 30, ZR18s. Something right there. Let's see what that is. An air pump for the suspension, probably. The front is the only one. The air suspension. There's a tank right there. And so this black hose runs up through the center of the chassis. And right to the front. These two cables are probably shift cables. Two green ones. Another tank here too. What's this? A broken fitting on it, whatever it is. Fuel tank? I don't know. Fuel cell? Depends how long it is. I haven't found a gas tank in it yet. Probably be the safest place for it, right? Dead in the middle of the car. Doing my best not to shake you guys around too much. Suspension. So it's got a coilover shock up top, going to a knuckle, going down to a couple of uh, adjustable con rods. Let's see. Um, let's see any adjustment on the bottom. That could be eccentrics inside here. That's where the bottom pivots are. Check out the front. It's like he was fiberglassing the shell to the body. Separate in here. We threw this together when it was there, that metal bar right up there is the only thing holding the suspension up. They have airbag shocks that were in it though. Not much room under the front here. Front's got more adjustment on the bottom. 
There's a cricket in here. You hear him? Of course, now it gets quiet. It's a big tub. It's like one and a quarter tubing. The size of it. And it's like there's two different kinds, too. Thinner stuff for holding. That's probably for holding the headlights, maybe. There's the bag on the other side. And a, a piece of wood holding the suspension up over here. <laughs> All right, that's about what we can see from the outside. <clears throat> Underneath, rather. And there's four pallets of stuff upstairs. I just don't know what I'm missing, you know? They said it, they bought, I think he started the project in 2000. And I think they bought a low mileage wrecked BMW 7 Series is what the stuff came from. One of the problems though, I see a bunch of stuff is missing. There was another engine that they had there. Unfortunately, they sold that off. And I think it had a bunch of the missing pieces possibly for this. see so that's probably that line coming up from the rear of the airline not quite sure where they'd be going back into the where they lead off to and then we got two more of these I don't know if they'd be air or fuel connected to something Here's the other airbag for the other side that's missing. A couple of brackets, I don't know what they would be for. <laughs> Big erector set. I would think we could probably take maybe some of the skins off of it. It doesn't look like it's attached together with any kind of permanency see two screws there i don't know what's going to be inside here could probably pop a tire off of it too the biggest thing is i'd like to get the transmission off of it to see what we have and, and see if we can spin the engine see if we can get a flywheel on there is a flywheel upstairs whether it fits the car i don't know and maybe a reason why that's not all put together All right, yeah, we've done enough looking. Actually, what's this right here is a latch. That lift up. Okay. Why would you, but why? What would you need access to back there? Access to your exhaust? <laughs> I don't know, it seems like pretty elaborate, doesn't it? I don't want that. Not my flavor. I'm wearing the lollipops. Yeah. We get it. I'm gonna get it. Ready? <laughs> Good catch. Go get it. <laughs> what you got? All right. Let's see about trying to open this thing up a little bit and take a better look inside. Yeah, we're gonna wanna open up the ass end of this anyway, and then the quarter panels are attached. Let's see if we can get you in there. Oh, I saw it. There's like one bolt on each side, there it is right there. One bolt there, one bolt on the other side. That should take this, this rear, I'm gonna call it a bumper, out of our way, and then see what else holds the quarters on in the back. Feels like it's attached somewhere. Well, one thing at a time. Let's get this off. I got those two bolts out. Let's see if I can get it out of there. Like 
cars that come apart like. <laughs> Reminds me of my, when I was a kid and I had those models that you would take apart. I think I'm, I just don't have to break them off the little plastic frames. like much is holding that on either. Gotta get a better screwdriver. Right tool for the right jet. I hope it doesn't fall off or take a screw out. <laughs> Alright. It could be more, I don't know. We're in. Now we can see some guts. That's one big ass tire, ain't it? Spray foam down in here. I guess that wasn't meant to get taken back off again down there. Still wonder what that tank in the middle is for. We could probably do the same for this side. Yeah, let's get this side off too. naked it looks like we could take this whole tail section maybe off right here hard to say I see like like a, an attack there on that one I see that almost looks like it's welded to it and then that's welded to that I don't know about getting that bolt out neither Might be a little, as we walk it back and unbolt it, looks like it's going to be a bit of a tight fit. Yeah, the same here. It's got kind of a weld going across. We could break that, it's no big deal. And that's welded to there. 
Maybe they're very short, maybe they're only threaded into that. And the same on the bottom there. I see we throw a wrench on it and find out. It'd be nice if we can remove that whole section and we get the exhaust off. Get closer to that trans. I guess we take the one out below. We'll see how long that is. That'll answer our question, right? Yeah, it's very short. So that's what it is. They're just very superficially in there. I have a feeling this is going to be a, a tad heavy when we undo it. So I'm going to get the rest of them out and I'll get one of you for help. Well, I got a little bit of a conglomeration attached to the back of it. One bolt left. And I'm hoping that it just pulls away and everything stays in place. But there is the chance that all of it goes and goes crashing to the floor too. Either way I'm gonna film it. One more turn. skinnier as we speak. Alright, next I say we get that resonator set up off of there. Let's see where we're attached. There's no, no, no nuts on the bottom of that right there. Maybe just sitting on there. Exhaust is disconnected there. No bolts in it there. These two. I wonder if we should take it here. We'll take those two nuts off the top of it and we'll lift that whole system right off. Yeah, let's get those two off of there. What? That's, that's heavier than expected. Now we're in, huh? I feel like I'm playing with Formula One. I don't know if they'll be in our way. We do have... We got the axles to deal with. And I don't think we know if we need to take them right out. Or can we just unbolt them? So the rotors can stay with it. It looks like it's all the caliper and everything's kind of attached to these motor mounts. Actually, that whole section. And yeah, it looks like that whole cradle we can unbolt. It'll take all this with it, except for the axle. So if you, I don't know if we're gonna have enough room where the axle half is though, to clear the bell housing. I don't think there's much holding the exhaust on. I'm going to go take a peek. Might be only like one or two nuts on the manifolds. I got them. We might get those right out of our way. Because we have to get in there and, and do some screwing around anyway. What about that shift linkage? Well, if we take the transmission from here... Leave that bell housing on there, that adapter plate we're going to call it. And yeah, we contemplate a little bit. Yeah, some of them are even looser already. Hmm. 
Yeah, it looks like one right there, one right there, and another one far forward. Get those three off. Maybe I'll get that whole assembly out as one piece. Let me see if we can get the wheels off. Gives a little bit more room to get up on the car. Right now I'm kind of trying to reach over everything. I think that's it. That's a tiny tire. There you go, that'll allow us to kind of get in nice and cozy. I think this is the last one. There was four, there was two on each manifold. weird not working on a bunch of stuff that's rusty usually you got to heat all this stuff before I take it apart <laughs> all right you gonna make it hanging on the starter I'm gonna back you guys up and get a little bit of room Top too. Or the bottom. Okay. There you go. Getting close. I feel it. That's a good for it. Just drop them on the floor. One side. And this side doesn't have a starter, so it might be a little easier. Intake manifolds are just sitting on there too. And part of me is thinking if I could find a, a rotted out or burned up ratty. I don't know how expensive they are, if they're desired or not. You know, the, the V12 cars, the 7 Series. And rob it for parts would probably be a decent way to go. But again, I'm still open to all options. Put a diesel in it. <laughs> right. No starter on this side. Let's see if we can wiggle this one out. A little better. Plenty of room around it now. Yeah, so I say we probably go, we disconnect the drive shaft, the um, CV joints, and then we'll bolt the cage here. We gotta prop the engine too because it's, you know, it's one side of the mountain and the other mount there won't be nothing holding it. So we might, I might put up, maybe we'll put a board across the top. Not sure of that. Either that or a jack and a block from the bottom. We should have enough room to clear all this. Yeah, we got plenty of room here. And hey, we could probably use that same table that we used to take the, the rear wing assembly off to grab the cradle and block it. Let me try to come straight back with it. What do you think? You agree? No? I'm just not impressed at all. More of a Ferrari dog. Do that 12 more times. Wiggling that last one out of there. Looks like the rotor wants to come with it. Drop 
option. That's an impressive looking piece of machinery. All right, they're both free. Now we gotta figure out a way to support that engine. We could probably, although this is, you know, I don't think it's going anywhere. Maybe we could run a two by four across the top of that and we'll run a strap down under the motor, kind of help support it. And that way, if we have a ratchet strap, we can kind of use the ratchet strap to maybe change the height. Because if I need to roll this around, I don't want to have it supported from the floor, then I still have to come up with something anyway. Yeah, let's go try that. And if that doesn't work, then we'll work from the bottom, but that might be a good solution. At least I didn't use one of those crappy orange ones. We're one, we're one step up from there. I think I might still take a two by four. I'll cut it to the right dimension and we'll wedge that between the, the bottom of the uh, oil pan and the floor, just so it has uh, a part B. I'd use a jack stand, but I don't have one tall enough. Actually, I might. Yeah. Getting kind of personal there, aren't you? What are you doing? <laughs> yeah, we should be able to get it with this. this jack stand has like beads or sand in it and it's self-adjusting. I believe about an inch from the from the top. It's got little pellets in it. And to undo it, you just you just flip it upside down. And the pellets go the other way and you can collapse it again. Now that I got it stuck in there. <laughs> Let's see how good this works. So you can probably push that back. Yeah, it's not a good spot to be, Lily. Alright, now we can kind of work our way around that. The boss. He's supervising around that jack stand. Anyway, come in right about. Right about there, we jack that up and we could probably make a couple of pieces of wood for the forward part of it. The back, we're probably going to catch it right on that cage. We might even cut a 2x4 for right in here and we'll let it sit on there. And what we got in the front? I'm going to go crawl under there. I'll measure a distance. We'll try to make a block of wood for the front of that too. So this will keep it from tipping the back side of it. And the front we just need the support. So I got to unbolt it too. I should probably pull that back out of the way. Get all the bottom bolts off. And we'll just leave those top two. The trans is unbolted. But the four and the cage in the back are still holding. I just want to make sure I get a good... Almost touching. I'm going to go up a hair. I don't want to lift the car up there, you know. Nah, it's no good. I gotta make another shim for the front. One bolt to go. I think it's free. Give her a little wiggle. I'm gonna get me a big old pry bar. And try to pry against that mount against that one. Or actually, a piece of wood. Anything is a pry bar, right? See a slight air gap around the transmission. I don't know if anything else is still holding it though. Okay. I see it broke loose there. It almost looks like this side. I wonder if that, that funky looking thing with the screws on it is tucked into the. Yeah, I think that's overlapping it right there. It looks like I covered a block off the the starter hole. Let's try getting those two screws out. 
But yeah, that's it. I got you precariously propped up. Mm. I'd say that overlapped it, overlapped it, overlapped that lip. Now let's try it. Let's try it again. Got a little prime screwdriver too, maybe that'll help us. There's still something holding, it feels like on the bottom. I gotta wonder. Not ready yet. They couldn't make it easy, could they? They look real close. Right there. It's a bolt going this direction. Well, that's a pain in the ass because now I gotta take that whole gotta take the whole plate with me now because of they bolted it from the other side. Well, it is what it is. So all those bolts are out. That's the one thing I'm worried about. Kind of wonder on the starter bolt how far in does that stud go? I guess we can kind of... There is two bolts still I put back in the cross member because I had to roll that out of the way and back in again. Let's... I don't know if I, the strap is going to run that starter too. I may have to rework that. Yeah, let's... What do you want to do? You want to relocate that strap away from the starter. Might as well unbolt the starter to get it out of the way because if we don't unbolt it, it will be an issue holding it together. If we do unbolt it, it wouldn't have been an issue. So, take care of it now, I guess. What time is the charm? Watch it was the starter all along, I wouldn't let it go. There's an access hole underneath, and there might be an Allen bolt going this way through that hole. Well, that's a good sign. We have a half inch apart. All right, let's get this puppy out of there.
So that bolt I was told you about was underneath. That was what was holding it. I wasn't able to thread it all the way out though because it ran into the case. So now I got to get back under there again and it's got about another two or three turns that I can get it to back up. Hopefully it'll come apart. <laughs> Almost there. I can taste victory, I tell you. Almost there. But I have said that before. <laughs> it ain't over till it's over. There's a bushing on the shifter that's holding. I unbolted the cables so they can pull through. That nut is hitting on the back of that bracket. So you undo this. Should be able to lift that up out of the way. But the cable's what's holding this now. This goes on any longer, I'm gonna need a nap. Just saying. That was simple. <laughs> and it came apart like we thought it first would. Let's go look at what we got. So that was the bolt that was getting me from the inside. I had to go reach through that hole and loosen up. And those two, yeah, they, no, cause that was separate. That wasn't holding it. Just the nut was was binding on the bracket. Yeah, because the, the bell housing went around that. Didn't touch any of that. Sheesh. What about the starter? Yeah, we still got another bolt there. That's why it wouldn't come off. Was that covered or did I just miss it? It is below the starter. By... right here yeah. so down inside that hole yeah yeah that probably would have helped to get that out of there too would have it'll have the whole face plate I think he's doing some machining and lining stuff up apparently Upstairs, I have a flywheel, which is probably from the transmission. I hope that that fits on there. Let's go up and go get it and see what we got. Yeah, that one bolt was hiding in here where he machined a hole through the starter. Is. All right, so here's the two pieces. That's the flywheel. I'm not trying to pet you, Lily, but I will. Don't let that fall over on your toes because you're going to yelp. Watch out. And this, I would think came with this trans. We're going to find out right now. All right, so clutch disc will fit on there. Let's get you set up on a stand. That is not looking good. It looks like that bolt pattern is much wider on that. But let's get it up there and go look anyway. just going to be too far apart. I wonder if we could drill that flywheel. Let's see if we can get this dowel out of here. I'm going to see if we can pop that out. So at least we can get it flush up to it and, and get a better idea. But yeah. Actually at this point I don't even care if I destroy it.
We need a big screwdriver again. Should be just tapped in. And I know what I can do. Let's reset. Gotta get the screwdriver under it. There it goes. Right. Now I'll set that flywheel up there. And the other thing is. How close is the starter going to be to it also, right? All right? So that's no way near. It won't sit up flush against it. It is, it is no way near being. <sighs> I wonder if we could just kind of prop that up there and put the starter in there. Get an idea what the starter looks like. Well, this is, yeah, I don't think the starter's going to be close neither. This is probably where he left off and, and just said I'll get to it at a later date, is my guess. And I don't know what is comparable. So we need a flywheel from a BMW. Whether a 12 and an 8 or a 6 is the same one, I don't know. I'm sure there might be some people watching this that have the education on that stuff and Feel free to comment as far as uh, your idea or thoughts about getting that get matched up. Again, this is an automatic. It's was an automatic too because there's no um, pilot bushing for the transmission. Generally, on a standard transmission, the the shaft that sticks out gets centered by the engine, and there's no bushing for bearing in there at this time. Let's go! Where's the pair? Where's that five scripts again? I just wanna... Hold on. I so I put a jack underneath it and shove the starter back in the hole. You can see how far away that starter gear is away from that. So that's not even close. That's not even gonna be an option for us. That flywheel would need to be another two inches in diameter. To be able to get on there. Hmm. Well, ain't that a pickle? I got no way to spin the engine. If you had a flex plate off of one of these that part would line back up but you won't be able to get it to make because even like look where the vice grips are how close that bolt is so that would put the flywheel diameter in collision course with this bolt, which I don't know how far it goes through. Doesn't matter, that flywheel has to come out anyway. No. So what's our options? If you had a bell housing from, if I always get a bell, a standard bell housing from the V12 flywheel, etc. Would I be able to modify a transmission that's all one piece how are you gonna go about cutting that apart right like you can unbolt it like you would like an American car 
So do I bail on the V12 and try to put a different power plant in that would line up to that? I gotta think about all this for a while because we will change the battery you know, we'll chat. Uh, what about running, I'm still trying to think of like running an intermediate gear or gears, but the problem with that is it would be engaged with the flywheel all the time. Lily, your, your, um, spatial awareness for danger sucks. <laughs> I'm glad you feel secure with the, uh, the safety of my cobbling. Fly was gonna come down and knock you in the noggin. All right. I don't see us trying to get that diameter of that flywheel all the way out to that starter. Can the starter get moved in closer? Possibly. You can't really put too much bigger of a starter gear on it because then the starter loses its power to be able to turn it because it's a gear ratio thing, you know? It's probably. I'm going to guess, like, say, 20 to 1. That starter spins 20 times every time it spins the, the engine once. So if you double the or triple the size of that, then this is only, you know, then you're at, like, 7 to 1. And it may not have enough to spin it. Plus, it has to clear everything, too. Hmm. Maybe they make something. Maybe there's something that comes in that I'm just not aware of. Hmm. Should probably look on pictures. Try to bring up what these look like. I could always put a VW engine in it. <laughs> Two of them. <laughs> Three of them. I'll have a flat 12. Alright. Alright, guys. Well, this is quite a long one. We have the car totally tore apart, but at least I got to the point. Uh, this is, this is was the what I thought was going to be an issue, and I, I just kind of wanted to get an idea of what we had, and uh, I was kind of hoping because I, I was able to peek in there, I can kind of see that it had you know eight holes for flywheel, and I saw this one had eight. I'm like, ah, oh, maybe you know, but nah, just not going to happen. All right. Look at that, and the pile of, and the mess that I made. <laughs> She's a little shorter. Get some pieces. Look at the size of those tires, man. Things are ridiculous. <laughs> there you got one, two, three, three and a half hands. What are you doing? Alright guys, I prolonged it long enough. I want to thank you all for kind of hanging out with me and uh, doing some wrenching and, you know, hey. It's always enjoyable. Beats flipping burgers at McDonald's, that's all I got to say. So with that, we're going to go sign off. I'm not sure what the future of this is going to hold. You may not see it for a long time, may come back. I just don't know. I don't, I, I don't have a... Uh, I'm not looking to start a lifelong project right at the moment. I got a lot of other things that uh, I really like to put before this. But again, I just wanted to get an idea what was uh, making this thing tick. And I guess now we know. <laughs> All right. Till the next one. I'll see you later. I guess. You want to say goodbye? Say goodbye to the people? No? Yeah, you just... You don't work with dogs or kids, right? Say goodbye. So, <laughs> here I am again. Closer inspections to fly well. There is a gap behind here that that could fit, and it clears these bolts, so they're not an issue. So, if we did get a stock flywheel that would fit in there, but then we would have to attach that flywheel to it 
Still not positive how all that would work. But there is there is a gap created. That's why the bolts, that's why it's all set up like this. Alright. Wish I had the other engine. That's probably what it was, yeah, you know, again the the idea was stealing those parts from. Even if it was, I wonder just the flex plate. And the flex plate was gonna squeeze back in here off the automatic. And then he was gonna attach the flywheel to the flex plate hub. It's gonna be pretty exact because that thing will vibrate like crazy. But that would be the start part of it anyway. So that's the pressure plate and flywheel, uh, clutch disc and flywheel sitting inside the stock transmission. That's where it would sit. And it's been machined out. Here's that one bolt I got out, I tried to get out. But that didn't need to come out because if I had known about the one that was hidden inside there, that one, it would come apart like we expected with all this going with it. So we have, like we said, we were able to get a stock something in here. I'm not sure where this is going to sit. And we still have to figure out pilot bushing and all. I'm not that concerned. We can kind of make something up for that. Something that bridges the gap between the uh, center of the crankshaft and that. We can uh, turn something on the lathe to make that work. It's just getting that missing link of that other part. And try to get the two of them married together. And get them dead centered, either bolted and or maybe even welded together. You know, you weld this to the to the other one, and now it becomes one big assembly. Or you're able to come off with a hub to the other one in here. It ain't over till it's over, right? All right. <laughs> I'm over for tonight anyway. <laughs> Mm-hmm.